talk me into this. It's gonna be amazing. Ladies ready? Smile. down. I'm so scared. Woo! Guys, I saw this movie and I panicked like the whole time watching it. It's very, very That's scary. the idea. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you panicked, but I'm also... <laughs> But how was it for you to film? Did you panic throughout the film? Because I, I imagine filming a, a shark movie um, specifically would be a scary thing to do. Yes. I. Um, so both Mandy and I had had no dive experience before we did this film. I'd had a little experience in an underwater tank. But <laughs> we had a crash course for about a day and a half. And then we got really thrown in the deep end. Um, at, pun intended. <laughs> and it was... It, it was really exhausting and frightening. And basically in this film, we did everything that you are not supposed to do when you're diving. So you're supposed to breathe slowly and no sudden movements. And the entire movie, we were hyperventilating and scrambling and, you know, the, the, the process, no one had really done it before. So we were kind of guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was nerve wracking, definitely. And there were some sort of hairy situations that we got into on a few occasions, but... By the end of it, I think we just felt really proud of our accomplishment that we'd survived two months underwater. Oh, my gosh. What were these hairy situations? Can you give us a taste of... Yeah. Um, so one of the days, I my oxygen wasn't quite turned on enough. And so I just thought I was really tired and, you know, I wasn't having a great day physically. And then I was really like struggling to breathe underwater and then when I got back above it felt like my lungs had like stretched out like a balloon so I had stretched my lungs one day and the dive master seemed very unconcerned <laughs> and he was like oh you'll be fine you just your lungs stretched you'll it'll be tough to breathe mm -hmm. for the night and then you'll be fine tomorrow and of course I was terrified that I was going to die in my sleep but I survived and there were just like a few occasions once um, my oxygen tank wasn't connected to my BCD which inflates you and keeps you um, so you can descend slowly and I dropped right to the bottom of the tank and my ears, you know, as you can imagine what happens when you do that, they all get very painful. So there were just like a few little occasions where we realized, you know, this is not all fun and games, yeah. but other times it was amazing and beautiful and peaceful and, and being underwater like that, it's almost like you're floating. It's, it's a really zen experience. You are floating, but it's a really zen experience. It's like kind of like meditation at times. So it was really cool. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. Yeah, where did you did you guys shoot any part of this like in a pool or was you actually all of in it the was ocean? all of it was in a tank. So the first uh, five weeks of filming, we were in London, and uh, we shot in a tank about twenty feet deep there. So it wasn't forty seven meters down, but it was still quite deep. And then we went to the Dominican Republic to do exteriors, and sort of um, there was a tank there that was a lot larger but more shallow. And so we did the um, sort of closer to the surface footage, and then on the surface of of the ocean. So. All tank work for about eight weeks. Wow. And for more than half of this movie, you have the masks on and everything. Yes. How was that filming with all the, <laughs> the headgear and the tank? And It was a really interesting experience because we had to learn how to act in a different way to be able to emote. And it's all really in our eyes. And 
you know, crying under water with that mask on is a very strange experience. Uh, but it, it's quite technical too because obviously there were lights so that they could see us and you would do a take and you'd be screaming and crying and scrambling and then all of a sudden they'd be like, okay, can you just do it again? But you're going to have to tilt your head up because the, <laughs> the, glass is reflect the lights are reflecting on the glass. So it was, it was quite technical and, and those, those masks are very heavy and so your neck would get sore. But I'm making it sound dreadful. It really wasn't. <laughs> it was fun. Um, it, but it just was, it was a very physically grueling shoot. Yeah. And you're in scuba suits. Yeah. And... We got real strong. Yeah. What about the directors and the, you know, the DP? What did they, did they have to go down with you with tanks on with underwater cameras? So the DP, the camera crew, the lighting, they were all underneath with us. But they had regulators and not the full face mask where you could communicate. So we, they couldn't talk to us. Mandy and I were the only two who could talk to each other underwater. And then we had a line to the director who was uh, above, on land above us. And he would sort of direct us from there. So we really kind of were on our own. It was a very interesting experience. Normally when you're shooting a film or a television show, the director comes right up to you, you have a chat, you do another take, and this, you know, took a lot longer and Mandy and I really had to rely on each other just performance-wise as well. Like, did that work? Could you, were you convinced? Could you see it? Um, so it was interesting, but the, the camera crew was amazing and they'd done a lot of um, underwater photography before and they were just so special and helped us a lot. So were you and Mandy, uh, in the movie, you guys play sisters. Yes. Um, tell me about your relationship with Mandy. How is that? And you guys probably had to form some sort of bond b being underwater. A hundred percent. I could not imagine doing this film with anybody else. She is a ray of light. She's even better than she seems. Like, she's just such a wonderful person. And we really bonded. And we, do, I think we learned very early on when we had this crash diving course, we did the afternoon in the pool and then two ocean water dives that we were gonna need each other through this because it was demanding and you know, some days I would be really exhausted and she would carry the load and other days she would be tired and you know, I would try and rally and it just, she, I think we formed a friendship for life <laughs> over this film and I, it, you know, thank goodness that I had her to do it with because if you were stuck for eight weeks with someone you didn't like under there, it might be pretty tough. Yeah. During the audition process, did you guys have like, chemistry tests? And No, we actually didn't. The first time we met each other was, um, on the, the boat and the dive training, well, in the pool and then on the boat. So it was, uh, it was <laughs> very, a, a quick bonding experience, but it was great. And Thrown I in the water about, together, yeah. you know? We, we went off the coast of California in Ventura and the water was 55 degrees and we were freezing and just, it, it, so many things we have to like really <laughs> grab onto each other and go, okay, we got this. So that's how it was. So what made you crazy enough to star in a shark movie? Because <laughs> I would just be so scared. I don't know. Do they have prop sharks? Were you swimming with real sharks at No, time? we weren't swimming with real sharks. Thank goodness. They're CGI, but I think they look pretty cool, yeah, right? It's really great. Yeah. Um, what made me crazy enough? <laughs> the script did. Honestly, like I read it and I was so, it was so compelling and I couldn't stop turning the pages and I knew how difficult it would be from my small amount of tank experience from um, the mermaid show I did many years ago. Um, <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> Thank you, you at the mermaid show? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just, I, I think both of us felt the same way. We were searching for a challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's not often that you get material that is so heavily dependent on just a few characters. And um, it's so physically demanding. It just was, it was exciting um, and frightening. But I th I'm, I'm so glad that that I agreed. There were definitely times during production that I was like, well, this was a terrible idea. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, now that it's coming out and everyone's really responding to it, I'm, I'm so glad we made it through. Yeah, so the story is you guys are away on vacation um, and you go scuba diving, uh, not scuba diving, but cage diving. Cage diving the sharks, yes. Um, and the cage falls. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of stuff happens that I don't, of course, a lot of give stuff. away. Um, what was the scariest moment for you to shoot out of all that stuff that you went through? Scariest thing to shoot. You know, I think it was just the first few days of filming where we had we really didn't understand the toll it would take on our bodies. And we, we would crawl. I mean, we did about four to five oxygen tanks a day. And per tank, you last about an hour, an hour and a half. And... We were just so exhausted and we would crawl out of the tank at lunchtime and pass out. And then I just didn't know how I was going to make it through. And that was the scariest part for me because I knew I was looking down the barrel of another seven weeks or so of that. Um, but 
we were really well taken care of. We had wonderful safety divers and we had some um, amazing professional divers, stunt divers who did some of the really tricky stuff uh, for us, like where the cage drops, because you know there are problems with your ears and all of that sort of stuff when you drop really suddenly and they're very used to that. Uh, but it, it, the whole thing was pretty dang scary. Because yeah. I went scuba diving once in my life and I was not very <laughs> far below the surface and you get a little panicked if you you're not used to it. You get phobic if you're not used to it because you're breathing through, you, you know like if that regulator comes out, you're done. Mm -hmm. There's no, I mean you have a, that's not true. That's a massive exaggeration. <laughs> you have another one. But, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's dangerous. And I think there, um, when you start to dive at really deep levels, you can't ascend because you'll get the bends, which is a, a real part of this film. The girls can't just go up to the top of the surface because you get nitrogen bubbles in your blood which go to your brain and it's very, a very terrible thing to suffer from. Um, so there are all of those sort of complications that can arise. Uh, but I think I've <laughs> had my dose of diving for a little while. Yeah. I'm not sure that I'm ever going to go scuba diving again. I was going to say, are you like bitten by the scuba bug or nope, no? Yeah, not no, a bit. You're done. Done, <laughs> done enough for a lifetime. I actually tried, when we were in the Dominican Republic, we had some friends come and visit and I was like, all right, we're going to take them diving. Even though we're exhausted from it, we're going to go and like try and do it in the ocean. And <laughs> we, we went out on this rickety old boat that looked like, you know, in Captain Phillips, the Somalis come in on that like rickety, that's what this boat looked like. And it, <laughs> we were very nervous, but we got on anyway. And... Um, we, I was the first to go in the water because I get really seasick. So I have to get in straight away because I don't know if you know this. Here's another fact. I'm full of facts today, aren't I? When you, um, when you are seasick, if you get in the water, it goes away because, you know, it's all about like your equilibrium or whatever. And so I dove in the water and there were jellyfish everywhere. And all of my legs got like stung all over my legs. And so I'm scrambling back to the boat. I'm like, nobody get in, nobody get in. I got back on the boat. I'm still seasick. I'm still throwing up on the side. Oh. And then the boat won't start. Oh, so they can't right. take us back in. And everyone else gradually starts to become seasick. Mm -hmm. And when, we, when they finally started the boat and we finally got back to land, I was like, you know what? I think that was a sign. <laughs> I think I never need to do that ever again. Yeah, that's like a real life horror movie right yep. there. You could have filmed that and released it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you guys are acting out you know, being chased by sharks. Uh, how did you go about doing that? Were, was there anything for you to like uh, set your eyesight on or? Um, it was usually just like a rock at the corner of a, the tank or something. You have to be terrified of a rock. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the part of the film that is uh, the hardest, I think. You have to pretend that the rock is coming to eat you. Yeah. Um, but we didn't, they attempted to use a fake shark head that was very unconvincing and mm -hmm. just made us laugh. So most of it was our imagination. Are you, were you a Shark Week fan? Are you fans of Great White Sharks? Well, or? I'm not fans of Great White <laughs> Shark. A fan of them. Um, I love Shark Week. Mm -hmm. And I'm terrified. Like, there's a genuine pho phobia of mine, sharks. So, um, <laughs> it's, I, I'm, Mandy's convinced me since we've been doing this, uh, <laughs> this press tour that I will go cage diving with her at some point. Oh. I know, she's so brave. I, at I first I was her. like, hell no, I'm never doing that. And then finally I agreed because, you know. I succumb to peer pressure all the time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I d I'm scared of them. After seeing this movie, I will not go cage diving. Probably ever. don't. Or at least, like, read the Yelp reviews of yeah, the yeah. company that you're <laughs> going with first. Make sure it's not a rusty old cage. Right. Yeah. That would help. Um, so what made you want to be a part of this film? I know, well, we all know that you have been on TV, and we loved you on Vampire Diaries Thanks. and the originals. And Thanks. Yeah. Um, so what made you kind of transition uh, to the film world for a little bit? Listen, it's always the dream to be able to do both. Mm -hmm. And I think when the opportunities come up, you jump at them. And that was like this opportunity. It's, I'm not really often thought of for a role like this. Um, and I think I was just so excited at the opportunity to, you know, throw myself into a film and, and try it out. And I loved it. And when you're in a TV show, you sort of have limited time to be able... You have a hiatus period, obviously. You film sometimes, depending on the length of the show, five months to ten months. Mm -hmm. So you have a couple months, if it's ten months, to fit a film in, and it doesn't always happen. But this came at really the perfect opportunity, and um, Mandy's had such success with This Is Us Now, which is so amazing, but we shot it right before then, so she had time to do that. And uh, it was really, it was just so much fun. And I'm so, it was two years ago that we did it. So I'm, I'm really glad, yeah, glad to, to finally see it coming out. Release it. 
Um, what's the difference for you uh, shooting a movie versus shooting a TV series? Uh, it's just a lot more intense shooting a film mm -hmm. um, because it's a shorter period of time and um, especially in this film, it was quite, it was relying on Mandy and I and it was just the two of us in Cage for, for the whole film. So you're working every day, all day and it's, it's, you don't have as long to sort of connect with the character and, and you just have to throw yourself in there. Whereas with a, a TV series, you just, you really know that character and you become them and, and sort of, it's, it's the same in the sense that the way it's shot is quite similar. You have a little more time with film than you do with TV, but it's just uh, with television, you have more time to explore the characters that you play. And I love your character, Rebecca. We all love yeah. her on. Are you <laughs> sad to see uh, the Vampire Diaries end? Yes, of course. I mean, I know I, I was so happy for them all because it had been a really long journey and I think that they were all ready for the characters and, you know, the show to come to an end. I think they were not happy about it, but it was a sweet ending for them. Um, I'm just really excited that the originals are still going and, you know, maybe I'll have the opportunity to come back this season as Rebecca. Who knows? Yeah. Because I know you left as a series regular, yeah. but you'll still make appearances. I can't help myself. Yeah. <laughs> Every year I've called Julie or Michael. I'm like, Look, can I come? Can I, can I do some episodes? I just love it. And, and I love the people that I work with. And I, you know, it's, they're like a family to me. So it's very hard to walk away from your family. Yeah, they are your family in the mm -hmm. show. But we love when you come back. Because Thank it's like you. a little special surprise for us. Thank you. Um, but you... Is it right that you have a new pilot coming out? Oh, yeah. We did, we shot the pilot, but it's not going to go to series. So um, it, that was really fun. We shot it in Vancouver, but I'm free and available to go back and do some vampire butt kicking. Yeah. What's it like playing a vampire? It's fun. I mean, the, <laughs> when you put those teeth in, they you sound like an absolute dork. <laughs> like, because you have a lisp and you can't talk properly and you, it's just, like, so hard and it's not at all sexy. There's no, like, I know there's that myth that, like, the teeth come out and you do... <laughs> no. Um, you spit everywhere and it's... Uh, but it's really fun. I mean, especially the way that they've written the originals and the original family. Like, we get to have so much fun with those characters and um, the, the only thing that's not fun is constantly being covered in fake blood. And it doesn't taste great, uh, but it's you know it's it's a dream job. It's amazing. What did you take from that experience playing that character, or you know any of your TV experiences that you brought to Forty Seven Meters Down? What did I take? You know, it's so funny. It was just such a completely foreign experience doing this film because it's entirely underwater, or almost entirely underwater, and the way that you act underwater is very, very, very different to anything that you would do on land or anything that I had normally done. So I really had to kind of wing it and I hope it was convincing. I don't know, you'll tell me. <laughs> You're clearly like a swimmer or at least, did you grow up near I the did. water? Yeah, yeah, I grew up swimming a lot and I played water polo as a kid and, and my first show H2O, I played a mermaid. So <laughs> you guys are awesome. I played a mermaid. So we spent a long time swimming in that and we did that all our, ourselves. And um, the only difference with that was that we held our breath versus having an oxygen tank. Yeah. But I, I love swimming and I love the ocean and so I really connected with that. Great. And what would you like to do in the future? What would be a dream role for you or something that you hope to accomplish in, in your life? Do you know what I'm just so excited about? I'm so excited that Wonder Woman has done so well oh, and that it was a, like a female star superhero and a female director. So to be able to be involved in a project like that would be so great. Even if I'm literally an extra, I don't care. Like, I, I just think it's so cool um, that there are these opportunities, even in this film, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, female-driven stories. I, I love that. Yeah. The only guy in this, really, well, there were a few guys, but Matthew Modine was in He's it. You can never, yeah, you can never say no to Matthew You Modine. can never say no to that guy. He is the best. He's so sweet and funny and fun and smart and wonderful. He was great. Before I toss it to the audience, do you have any crazy stories that you and the cast got into in the Dominican Republic on, crazy your, on your stories? Shoot? I mean, listen, my, my jellyfish story was crazy. <laughs> no, uh, the one thing that was um, really nuts about the shoot was, so when we were in London, um, in the tank, to make it look like the water was murky and that there was algae, they would scatter broccoli throughout the tank, like little chopped up pieces of broccoli. And... As you can imagine, after, you know, th I think they would filter it out by the end of the week. But by day five, we smelled pretty horrid and we couldn't get the broccoli smell out of our hair because it was like kind of warm as well. So it was a bit cooked. 
it was. I spent my entire time in London trying not to smell like a piece of broccoli. Yeah. So there you have it. There's my story. There's some funky stuff floating around in that tank that I. Yeah, well, I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, that? there's some real funky stuff. I don't no, know, I know if it's, it's all broccoli. broccoli. I don't know what else is in there. We had a lot of cameramen. <laughs> I do want to open it up to the audience. Who's yes. first? Hey, hi. 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 There. Um, I just had a question. Big fan since H Career. As you know, I think you're a fantastic Thank actress. You. Sorry. I'm really nervous. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, Thank I was you. just kind of wondering, do you ever look back at your work? Like, do you ever have a movie day and you think, do you know what? I'm going to watch H Show. <laughs> but also, have you ever kind of considered kind of writing, you know, short films for yourself and think, do you know what? I'm going to write this and star in it and, you know, make something that I've done. If that makes sense. That's, well, so the first question, I ne rarely watch anything that I'm in. I've watched this film and surprisingly, normally I, I just can't watch it. I think I'm awful and dreadful. Um, but I actually like this film. But I don't, I don't ever pop on a marathon. That would be... <laughs> could you imagine? I'm just going to watch on the couch. Yeah. Um, no, I, I don't do that. But sometimes, you know, if it'll be on TV, if I'm travelling a lot, mm -hmm. like if I'm in Europe or something, it'll pop up and there'll be the subtitles and I'll see it. It was... I mean, 12 years ago we started filming H2O. So it's kind of nice to see that. Um, and in terms of writing, I haven't actually ever um, written something for myself, uh, mostly because I think people can do a much better job than I can. <laughs> but I would never say never, you know. The, it's, it's, um, I think it's so amazing when people can, like Lena Dunham and um, other actors and can write and direct and produce their own content. And um, so hopefully one day... I can do that and it won't be a big old flop, but who knows? Thank you, love. That's sweet. Here we go. Hey, Claire. Hey. Um, so for this movie, were there any scenes that were really difficult to do or that uh, you needed maybe a, a, a stunt double to do that you weren't able to? Yeah, the, the, the scene where the cage drops was... Um, oh, I just whacked myself with the microphone. <laughs> um, it, that was really tricky and we actually had to have the stunt doubles help us with that because it drops at such a rate you can't equalise. And um, in diving, when you go, you're supposed to descend slowly and like blow out through your nose and it pops your ears and that way you don't burst your eardrums when you're going down and this there was not really the opportunity to do that unless you had ha had <laughs> it's so strange like really flexible um ear muscles and these girls who have been diving for years and years were you know had they had obviously it was i think mildly painful for them but they were much better at it than we were so um, they sort of took our place in the, in the really quick cage dropping scenes. But most of it uh, we did ourselves. I mean, there's a scene where I, I take my mask off in this. Oh, that's a future song, Mask Off. Love that song. Does everyone love that song? Um, <laughs> now you're singing it in your head. Now I'm going to sing it in my head all day. Um, where I take my mask off that was actually really scary because we're still 20 feet underwater and I can't see anything under there so I don't know if I'm going to be able to put my mask back on and purge it in time to get the water out and if I can clip it up and it was uh, I think they thought they were going to have to use the doubles for that and I was game to have a go myself and I did and I'm still alive to tell the tale so yeah how long did that take you to get did it take you multiple we takes? practiced it um at the very top of the tank first a couple of times and then I was like all right I'll have a go we'll see because I knew that there were divers around and if I couldn't see anything and they would just shove a regulator in my mouth and I'd be able to breathe. So I didn't think I was going to die doing it, but I just was nervous that maybe I'd swallow water and start. But it, it, I, I guess, you know, took a couple of takes and then we had it. That's the stuff that scared me in the movie too. Like oh, the tank, they're taking the masks off and replacing yeah. the tanks and stuff. Yeah. Oh, replacing the tanks was tough as well because I genuinely it. like held my breath yeah. as I was doing that and... Um, made me realise I don't want to go cage diving without 17 oxygen tanks next yeah, right. to me. Because you're afraid of the sharks, but you're also just afraid yeah. of them. running out of it. I yeah. think that's almost as... It's, like, it's probably more frightening yeah. to be at the bottom of the ocean and know that you're running out of air and there's a clicking, ticking clock, clicking talk, yeah. ticking <laughs> clock. And, you know, the thought of just drowning like that is, I think, maybe more terrifying than being taken by a shark. That would be pretty quick, I imagine. All right, we have time for one more. All right. Hi, Hi. Love you as Rebecca. Thank so I can't you. wait to watch this movie. Thank you, love. Both characters, you play such intense roles. So my question is, what routines do you follow to get into character? What routines do I follow? You know, before I ever sort of take on a role, I try and think about the backstory of the character. Who is she? Where is she from? What does she do? What, have, what does she like? What doesn't she like? You sort of develop that as you go along as well. 
And then I think it's all in the writing, you know. You kind of have an instinct based on the incredible job that these writers have done uh, as and you know the directors have their ideas of the character and you it's your job to really work with everyone and come up with who they think this person is and you obviously add to it yourself but with Rebecca I mean I've been playing her for such a long time now she feels like a part of me so there's not too much preparation that needs to happen now when I go because I I just know her so well but with new characters like Kate in this film you you definitely have to do your homework and and, and uh, think about who it is. Otherwise, you'll have a pretty disjointed script because you never shoot film, I mean, because you never shoot it in a row. It's all out of sequence. So you have to sort of do the preparation before so you know where you're at at that moment. Well, guys, if you like shark movies, you'll love this. But if you like scary movies, you'll like it even more because yes. that was so scary. If you just like movies, you'll like it, honestly. Yes. So June 16th, it's June 16th. out. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much, Thank guys. you for being <laughs> here, Claire.